write a message to be sent to recruiter as a UX fresher asking for opportunities. It has got all the keywords etc right as well, like that's crazy. A new artificial intelligence tool is going viral for cranking out entire essays in a matter of seconds. And it's called Chat GPT. Chat GPT. Chat GPT. Chat GPT. Maybe you've heard of it. If you haven't, then get ready. AI has changed the way we work, live and communicate with each other, especially in creative and arts industry with products like ChatGPT, Midjourney and a lot of AI tools coming to edit your videos, creating arts, creating design as well as creating copy. So it's safe to say that it is going to have a tremendous impact on the world. But the big question is, is it here to help us do our job better or to take away our jobs? In this video, I'm going to tell you how to get a leverage over ChatGPT as a designer and also I'll be sharing some prompts with you that can help you create amazing results. Let's get started. Let's start with the basic. What is ChatGPT and why should we pay attention to this? If you already know about ChatGPT and you just want to know how designers can use it, you can jump to this timeline. For rest of the folks, this is about ChatGPT. ChatGPT is an artificially intelligent text generation tool. So as you saw in the starting of the video, I gave a prompt of just one line and it generates text just as a subject matter expert would. And that's scary, but also a good part because it can actually understand what you're talking about, what kind of response do you need and tailor its response based on that. But it's not new. It's just the way they have implemented it. So they have brought human intelligence as well as conversation to be a part of this AI, which means that if you ask a question and if you ask a follow up question without giving the context of the above question again, it can still generate very relevant answers for you, keeping in mind what you asked before. So let's say if I ask, hey, can you generate 10 ideas for me to create a website on then if I give a few constraints, like this has to serve an Indian audience and what all things I should keep in mind, you will see that there will be a very drastic difference in terms of the answers that you get. Because now it understands conversation just like a human would. The answers are not 100% right, but it's getting there. Let's talk about popular products and how much time they actually took to reach 100 million people. For Uber, it was 70 months. For Spotify, the number was 55 months. Instagram took 30 months to reach hundred million people. TikTok on the other hand only took nine months but chat GPT did that in just two months. 100 million users in just two months. And apart from open AI's chat GPT there is no other company in the world that is doing it right now. That's why this is considered to be one of the biggest competitors of Google search because all the queries that were made on Google earlier is now shifting to chat GPT and it's going to be super powerful. Search as a feature for Google brings most amount of ads but now people are having conversations instead of just asking on search and that's an attack on Google's core business which is advertisement and chat GPT is going to take a significant piece of that pie but here's why I think that chat GPT is going to win most of this battle if you look at chat GPT it's a very small company with less than 400 people in the team but recently Microsoft made a huge investment in chat GPT and Microsoft is a big player they have hundred billion dollars of cash in hand and so that can fuel the fire and Microsoft has one of the biggest advantages in the world which is its search engine Bing actually gets fourth highest ad revenue in the world but as we think about it we mostly search on Google so why is the number so high for Bing what we don't realize is whenever we get a new system we actually download Google Chrome but there are a lot of people who buy Windows machine and Bing is integrated in their search and that's the default browser in Edge as well. And since Bing is the default browser on their machine, most people actually don't change it. It still works because of the power of defaults. Power of default says that most people are lazy. So they don't change the default option even if they are given a choice. If you want to learn more about power of defaults, we have done a video on power of defaults that you can check out. The link is in the description. For most people who are switching from Bing to Google, now they have a reason to stay on Bing because Bing has recently integrated chat GPT in their search engine itself and you can see from this demo that Microsoft shared that now you can make a search on Bing and it is going to give you the results as earlier but 
also generate the result that chat GPT would have even given you. Let's see how chat GPT can help you as a designer. So let's take an example. As a designer, what are some of the gamification techniques that I can use? So gamification techniques that you can use as a designers include points and badges, leaderboards, progress bar, challenges and quests, rewards and prizes, levels and unlocks, personalization, social engagement, and things like that. If you look at the answers over here, these are right, relevant, and it helps me understand how I can use it. But can I make it better? So let's try making that. So I'll say make it for an educational app, keeping in mind it is for college students and you are a UX, you are a UX designer. So if you look at this answer, this has significantly improved. And as I have given it some more context around, it's an educational app. It has also added like, you know, uh, educational content and how we can use it, how we can uh, use the progress tracking feature, how the like, you know, leaderboards would be used, uh, how we can incorporate interactive quizzes and things like that. So just by adding a little bit of the context to it, it has changed the answer very much, personalized it for me and and what I'm looking for. And if you look at it, they have a thumbs up or thumbs down feature. So sometimes the if the answers are not accurate, you can just thumbs down it to let it know that it can be improved. It's not the right answer. And if you thumbs up, that will, if you look at it, if I'll thumbs up, uh, this is very relevant okay and that just sort of feeds back into the ai and helps them improve the product even further with these two examples i just wanted to show you that the answer that you get is highly dependent on the questions that you ask the better the question the better the answer chat gpt is going to generate for you a well-crafted question with the context as well as how you would like to get the answer has the power to take any good answer to a great answer that is super relevant for you this way of care fully crafting the prompts to get the better results is called prompt engineering. Did you like the answer that ChatGPT gave to us? I did. So if you did too, make sure to like this video as well so that we can keep teaching you more such stuff. Back to the video. So let me take one more use case. So let's say we are creating a landing page for a ebook that we are creating. So let's see how it helps us create that. What to put in a landing page of the ebook on UX design for B2B and SaaS products. So it is telling me what all should we put in the landing page, like attention grabbing headline, a brief summary of what ebook covers, a visually appealing image, some testimonials, a call to action, visit like something to collect their email and name, brief form, blog post, case studies, and things like that. So that's a very relevant. Can you give me an example of the attention grabbing headline for the landing page of this ebook. So if you look here, I have not shared which ebook I was talking about, but since it can store the context from the previous message, it has just given me a very good, like, you know, if you, if you look at it, if it has given me a very good headline to begin with, revolutionize your B2B and SaaS product with cutting edge UX design strategies, download our ebook now. Can I make it even better? So I'll say, can you make it simpler, but more impactful? So let's see if it can understand that. If you look at it, it has changed the words like revolutionize, cutting edge, and replaced it with simpler words like transform your B2B SaaS products with next level UX design, download our ebook now. So that's how it can help you actually create better results. If you share some context and insights around the thing that you're looking for. Let's use it for a use case where we are trying to create a brief for our user interviews. So we'll say that write me an introduction to a usability test briefing participants what's going to happen during the test suppose you are jacob nielsen so jacob nielsen is 
like you know one of the most known people in usability testing so i've just like you know added uh, his name and see how it comes out so hello welcome to the usability test my name is jacob nielsen and i'll be facilitating this session the purpose of this is to gather feedback on the product or website to understand how easy and intuitive it is to use during the test i'll ask you a series of tasks while thinking out loud about your experience i want to emphasize that we are testing the product not you so there are no right or wrong answers your Your honest feedback is essential to help us improve the user experience. As you work through the task, I'll be taking notes and asking you follow-up questions to better understand the experience. This session is going to approximately take like you know 30 minutes and will be recorded for analysis purpose only. Lastly, feel free to take breaks and ask question at any point point of time. Any questions before we get started? So that's perfectly rounded up introduction, which actually covers the critical aspects that they will not be judged. The product will be so that they, they can speak. up their mind and things about that like it's crazy good i would definitely like to use it even if i have been creating it for last 8 10 years right it's very good but let's take it even further so let's see if this can also generate the questions we should be asking our users so the use case becomes can it generate the questions we should be asking in user interviews so i'll say that i'd like to interview pet owners i'd like to find out what makes them use a pet sitter write me 10 interview questions i can ask pet owners What inspired you to use a pet sitter? How did you go about finding a pet sitter? What criteria did you consider when choosing a pet sitter? How frequently do you use a pet sitter? For what purpose? What types of services do you typically request from a pet sitter? How do you evaluate the quality of service provided by a pet sitter? Have you ever had a negative experience with a pet sitter? If so, you can describe it. So it even gives you a deeper level question to ask. What are the most important factors for you when so selecting a pet pet sitter what advice would you give to someone who is considering using a pet sitter for first time how does your pet behave when you return from a trip and they have been looked after by a pet sitter that's crazy level questions like most researchers would not be able to come up with these kind of questions that's crazy helpful and you should definitely use it let's say you want to practice design let's see if this can generate some prompts for you to start practicing design so i'll just say give me 10 ux design in prompts so that i can practice design challenges and add them to my design portfolio for my for my interviews so it is giving a few examples of like you know how you can redesign a app that is already out there how you can create a dashboard for an e-commerce website to track order and delivery status and things like that it is also telling about you can like you know uh, make an app for booking fitness classes and there are a lot of good examples that's there and i think most people haven't even touched upon these so these can be a good addition to your uh, portfolio okay let's make it even more fun can you make it specific to an indian audience which solve and make these solve big meaningful problems this is one of the biggest problems that i have even worked with one of the clients on which is like you know how do you connect farmers with like you know directly with people so that they can save on upon so much money because it's directly coming from the farms and and things like that so it's already generating such kind of prompts that can help you do good user research create great products and actually if if not something it can also help you generate great startup ideas as well that can help you make profit that's crazy cool since you have watched this video till the end i have something for you as i have shared with you i have created this notion file with all the prompts that i have been using this is how it looks i have written down all the use cases over here with the specific prompts and how you can get the better insights from it there are some advanced prompts as well as some basic prompts if you want this notion template get it from the description below super excited to know what you create next with these prompts do share it in the comments below if you learned some thing new from the video make sure to subscribe and like the video if you want to learn more about power of defaults how it influences our decision and how can you use it make sure to check this video out this is all for this video i'll see you in power of defaults video till then happy designing